again guys so today I want to show you a game that you cannot actually buy now on Steam or on Ubisoft store to be honest I don't actually know why but it's probably some legal problems or money it's always one of them Blues is a real-time strategy developed by Eugen Systems the same company that made the later war game series what is unique about this game is the scale of it at the same time you build your base your economy you create hundreds of units on a huge map but you can still see single units by the way if you scroll up high enough you will see that you are playing on a staff table you are playing on a map with tokens actually there is only one resource which is money and it comes from at the beginning from supply depots and later from administrative buildings you spend it on more buildings units which can be infantry tanks vehicles heavy weapons and aircraft all in all there are quite a lot of units and some of them can be upgraded to a better model the second very unique thing about this game are loses from title these are some kind of uh, tricks or you can call it uh, intelligence warfare they can for example hide your units or buildings they can well create fake units you get one ruse every two minutes and you can use it on a single sector on the map I think that's it if we talk about basic gameplay so let's talk about campaign which is quite long in general except the last part of the campaign it is quite historically accurate you take part in a historical operations and use historically accurate units but you play as fake general against fake general and sometimes you use well prototype units also the last part of campaign is a pure fiction all in all it is a very nice experience which also teaches you about everything slowly each mission is different you start in Africa and go through Italy France Belgium Netherlands and finally Germany and even though it's quite long it's not boring because it has pretty nice plot if we talk about single player you can also play skirmish of course against AI that is quite competent you can also choose not only its difficulty but also its behavior as a bonus you also get operations which are huge missions like in campaign with some well plot background let's say so for example you can play as France on Maginot line against Germans Italians and Russians there are also two operations which you can play in co-op even though the campaign is a single player only and now I will tell you about multiplayer but I will start with a bad news multiplayer in this game is still active even though there are not many new players and that's the biggest problem if you don't have maximal experience level or somewhere very close you will get instantly kicked from every game of course you get experience from everything including campaign but even though if you have maximal level and you will make yourself a reputation of a noob then you will not be able to play it at all but there is hope in a form of a free for all mode because there is only one guy per team and nobody cares if you are noob or not you can choose from seven nations but one of them comes from DLC each of them has unique defensive buildings and unique units each of them offers different gameplay and different tactics it is very unique that you can choose a period of time for your game which means you can use only units available at that time you can choose 1939, 1942, 1945, 
and two very different modes. Atomic era, which means you can use nuclear artillery, and total war, which means you start in 1939 and every 10 minutes the period changes forward. In practice people play only 1945 mode. Mainly because nuclear artillery is OP and very surprisingly cheap and periods of time before 1945 has some balancing problems. For example, Russians can use KV-1 heavy tanks in 1939, but the Germans can use only light tanks, they have no AT guns and the only thing they can pretty much use against KV-1s are 88mm AA guns and Stukas bombers. And I can tell you that it's not easy. The last thing I want to tell you is that this multiplayer has only one game mode. You can always destroy your enemy and especially if the time limit isn't set you simply have to, that's the only way to win. Or if there is a time limit you have to win by points. You get points from destroying enemy units and buildings. So all in all, for me, Rus is quite unique RTS. It has great campaign in many aspects, it has unique scale, because at the same time you can still see a single unit, but most of the time you play on a huge scale. You can play as many different factions and they have many different units. You can also play operations, which are, well, more or less a bonus campaign. Ruses are quite unique and very interesting mechanic. AI is quite competent, which means, well, it's not great, but it's not bad, it's okay, maybe a bit more than that. Economy is quite simple, which I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, for some people it will be good, for some people it will be bad. The biggest problems I have with this game is that you cannot buy it normally, you cannot buy it on Steam and, well, multiplayer is toxic for new players. Also, time periods, all except 1945, are unbalanced and are not played in practice. Also, only one game mode may be a problem for some people. It is up to you if you want to try this well, to some degree, prototype of a war game series. So that's it for this game review. Stay safe, guys, and see you soon.